Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Such an honor to be here. Thank you for the love. Thank you. Such an honor to be here. Let me start by honoring our father, the pastor, and his dear wife. Amen. Can we celebrate our resident pastor, the senior pastor of the church? Amen. Hallelujah. And then I came in while God's servant was ministering. I didn't want to miss it. I didn't even know you were going to be around today. Such an honor meeting you, sir. Thank you. Amen. Please celebrate Evangelist Lawrence Oyo. Are you doing that? Amen. And finally, can you celebrate the leadership of the youth for putting this together? For you to be blessed. Can you celebrate the Lord for that? Amen. Hallelujah. Already... I, I just felt like you should continue. Let me sit back. I, I'm telling you, I was just enjoying myself and writing, taking notes, and enjoying myself. Amen. All right, I will just build a little on what God is doing already tonight, and I know that our lives will never be the same. Wherever you are, can you lift your hands? Say, Lord, my heart is open. Already, like I've been receiving, speak to me. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Are you praying already? We have come with open heart. Oh, let the ancient words impart. We have come with open heart. Oh, let the ancient words impart. Come with open hearts. Oh, let the ancient words Father, help us again in this John, and let no one remain the same in Jesus' mighty name. one same thing is rendered in March where we read earlier Luke 11 from verse 1 must to speak on understanding the mystery of heaven on earth are we having the scripture Luke 11 from verse 1 so we can conserve time All right, it was our last prayer. The Bible said the disciples of Jesus came to him and then asked him to teach them to pray. Even as John also taught his disciples, next verse. Now, he started teaching them in the next verse, verse 2. He said, when you pray, say, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in heaven. Um, thy will be done as in heaven, so in earth. Next verse. Then he said, give us this day our daily bread. Let's read through five. And forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Verse five, the last. And he said unto them, which of you shall have a friend? All right, okay, that might not be necessary for this. All right, let me start by establishing that the earth originally was designed by God to be a colony of heaven. And this is very important. The earth originally was designed by God to be a colony of heaven, meaning when God was recreating the earth, there was an idea in his heart and this is very very important uh, mark the selection of my words when God was recreating the earth because what you see happen from Genesis 1 verse 3 down was the recreation account it was not the creation account say amen I just wanted to pay attention let me lay that foundation if that's all I'm able to do tonight maybe we'll build on that tomorrow listen Genesis 1 verse 1 the Bible said in the beginning God created the heaven 
not the heavens the heaven and the earth full stop only God knows how many years we are in between Genesis 1 verse 1 and Genesis 1 verse 2 I know you open your Bible and just flip through and in one second you would have finished the entire chapter but that a lot happened between Genesis 1 verse 1 and Genesis 1 verse 2 only God will tell us how many millions of years maybe when we get to heaven now Genesis 1 and verse 2 happened on the account of the judgment of Lucifer something happened that led to Genesis 1 and verse 2 it is called in theology the first flood because if you that flood that happened in Genesis 7 is that true it is called the Noah's flood or the first flood, I mean second flood so the first one that happened in Genesis 1 verse 2 is called the first flood or the Lucifer's flood something led to that Genesis 1 verse 2 Lucifer was judged now when God created the heavens and the earth they were in perfect shape in fact I will soon show you from scriptures that there were cities there were nations there were kingdoms upon the earth and that there were inhabitants even upon the earth say amen they were inhabitants upon the earth so something happened that led to the destruction of that ecosystem and then the Bible tells us that there was now chaos when Lucifer was judged give us Isaiah let me just give us two scripture there are a lot of scriptures scattered around Jeremiah Isaiah and Ezekiel let me give us few Isaiah 14 give us from verse 12 Isaiah how art thou fallen from heaven O Lucifer son of the morning how art thou cut down to the ground which did weaken the nation we are talking about Lucifer being cast from heaven to the earth and the bible says he's he's coming back to the earth weaken the nation question which nation are you seeing it meaning there were nations keep the scripture meaning there were nations upon the earth so the moment he was on earth the bible says his arrival here shook the ecosystem something happened to the entire world the bible says it shook the nations meaning there were nations upon the earth please keep the scripture media let's let's take two or three more verses are we going to have it thank you for thou hast said in thine heart i will ascend into heaven this might even interest you to know that lucifer was the one living in the earth in fact living in the garden there was a garden before the second garden that was created say amen wow all right may god help us i will i will i will show you briefly but let's just take this gradual he said for thou had said in thine heart i will ascend into the heaven meaning he was down here for you to ascend into heaven you can't be in heaven and you are ascending into heaven again is that true he said i will ascend into the heaven and i will exalt my throne above the stars of god and i will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the side of the north you know what lucifer was looking for the exact throne of god because we are told in scripture that the throne of god is in the side of the north great is the lord and greatly to be praised in the in the you are quoting scripture with this song uh-huh beautiful for situation joy of the whole world. look at the next line in mount zion side of the northern city of the great so lucifer know exactly what he was looking for the throne of god is in the side of the north so i will ascend and get into heaven and i will meander my way to the side of the north he wanted to dethrone god that was the attempt and the bible said he was judged and sent down here to the earth and his arrival did something to the nations did something to the earth two more verses so that we can establish a few more things he said i will ascend above the height and the cloud and i will be like the most high so he was looking for the likeness of god and eventually when god built man he gave him his image and what and likeness lucifer was looking for the likeness i'm driving my story somewhere next verse please then he said yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the side of the pit let's read on they that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider the saying in this 
Is this the man that made the earth to what? Tremble. That did what? Shake the kingdoms. Question. Were there kingdoms, were there nations upon the earth even before Adam was created? The answer is yes. You just read it now. So the moment he was judged and thrown down to the earth, remember, you, you, you know your Bible very well. Michael fought him, threw him down to the earth, and his arrival here, the Bible said, weakened the nation, shook the earth, shook the kingdoms. A lot of things went out of order, and that was the result of Genesis 1 verse 2. Say amen. That's how we got Genesis 1 verse 2. This is very important. Now the Bible said there was chaos, disorder everywhere, and there was flood everywhere, and the Spirit of God moved upon that flood. Then God said, let there be what? Light. Recreation has begun now. Let there be light, and there was light. Let there be this, and there was, until God finished the entire creation. And look at what God did. He had to now go to plant the Garden of Eden again. There was another garden before Lucy, I mean before Adam. Maybe you want to know where it is. Ezekiel. Ezekiel 28 from verse 13. So originally the heavens were meant to look, I mean the earth was created to look like heaven. The Bible said thou has been where, everybody read. In Eden, the garden of who? Who is the Bible talking about here? It can be Adam because look at the materials that were used in building this creature. The Bible says, and every precious stone was thy covering, the sardius, the topaz, the diamond, the burial, the onyx. All of these materials were the things that were used in building Lucifer. For you, when God was about to make you, what did he use in building you? So it can be, I mean, Adam. This was talking about Lucifer that he lived in the garden of God if you read down because of time we, we might not have to go through it the Bible said the moment iniquity was found in his heart God decided to cast him out of that Eden cast him out of that garden but that originally he was the one that lived here until rebellion brought disorder so God made the earth to look like heaven we are talking about heaven on earth that the original plan of God was that the earth should look like heaven. So why didn't he keep man in heaven? Because you can't have two kings in one kingdom. Man was made in his image, was made in his likeness. Meaning man had what God had. In fact, if you now read the book of Revelation 5 and verse 10, the Bible says he has made us kings and priests. This is very, very important. And our jurisdiction was to reign on earth, not in in heaven so now man rebel like the man of god started saying he touched a little on that man rebelled and that was what brought the disorder now finally because after god recreated the earth and kept adam in the garden lucifer knows that god hates rebellion and that the moment anyone rebel god is going to judge that individual so man is made to live in place of lucifer you know why Lucifer is angry with every human being? Let me give you two, three reasons. The first reason why Satan is angry with every human being is that there is something in you he wanted from God. I will ascend and be like the Most High. He wanted the likeness of God. He wanted to be like God. Now, the moment God judged him, he said, this thing you were looking for and you fought, you, I mean, you were even about to fight me. Let me prove to you that I can give it and still maintain it. So what God did was that he, he, he came and gathered sand. For Lucifer, you just saw the materials that were used in building him. For you, he said, let me, let me show Lucifer that I can use anything. So he gathered sand after building sand. He said, Lucifer, what did you say you were looking for? Likeness. He now took his likeness and image and breathed into sand. Are, are you seeing it? And then the Bible said, man became a little. This is the first reason Satan is angry with you. You don't have to do anything for him to be angry with you. You just need to be a human being. All that is required is that you should be a human being. The moment you are a human being, having you don't even have to be born again yet. That's why the man of God says everybody is going through something. Because Satan cannot fold his legs. The moment you are a human being, he's angry with you. 
the second reason Satan is angry with you, the position he's occupying now, you are the one filling that position. I mean, the position he used to occupy. Because you see, after the Godhead, the next angelic um, that, were, that were in, 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 in ranking after God, the angelic order was the cherubims. And the Bible says he was the anointed cherub. Meaning after the Godhead, he was Lucifer. Now, angels are no longer in that position. After the Godhead, you are the one that fits in that, into that position now. And Satan is angry with that equation. The third reason Satan is not happy with you is when you... You refuse to get born again. Listen, let me tell you. Remember, God kept a prophecy. He told the serpent, you will eat of the dust of the ground. Is that it? Where was man made from? From dust. Do you know that the moment Lucifer sees any human being, he believes that that human being is his food. The only thing that exempts you is new birth. If any man be in Christ, he's no longer that old man. He's a new creature. He didn't call you man again. He called you a new creature, meaning you are another kind of species for being born again. This is very important so lucifer now said hence man is the one occupying this garden i used to occupy and then the many privileges i had he's the one having it let me make man rebel and of course he made adam rebel and this was the expectation the moment adam rebel god will send him out of the garden send him out of his presence then man forever will become my slave but the case was different with man the moment man rebel look at what happened god himself came down to adam and eve and said follow me i'm going to send you out of this garden for lucifer he was cast out of the garden for man sent forth listen carefully if you are a lady you're about to get married what do your parents do for you they organize a party and send you forth a lot of people think god was judging man by sending him out of the garden let me tell you it was an expression of love now man is fallen let me even have a young man and a young lady that is bold enough can i just use anybody please very fast maybe from the worship team a young man a young lady come come thank you now let's assume this is this is adam hold your if <laughs> now this guy has fallen and now god came and told the serpent this is yours this is this this is that and then for the man he said if i leave you in this garden as a fallen man remember man is smart man is wise and there was a prophecy that the day you eat of this tree you will surely die man had fallen he knew that he was going to die and remember that in that same garden there was also the tree of life if you were the one knowing you are going to die and also knowing that in the garden there is a tree of life you can eat and not die what will you do no you are smart you know what you would have done you would have just waited for god to step out the moment god steps out you will look for that fruit tree of life and eat so God said, before I leave you guys, I will send you out of the garden. Hold my hand. So he said, follow me out of the garden. I'm taking you out because I love you. I will keep you here. We'll have to now walk to eat. You had all of those fruit for free. Now you will have to walk to eat. And I'm going to come back after four days to redeem you. But you will remain here this was sent forth because if i allow you to eat of that tree of life in your fallen state, redemption is not possible this is why angel i mean angels that rebel cannot be redeemed this is why satan cannot repent it's not given to them so i will keep you out of the garden so that you don't touch up that tree of life in your fallen state that was an expression of love. It meant God had a plan B for man. There was a plan B. And of course, if you read Revelation, it said, Behold the lamb that was slain. 
before the foundation meaning when God was creating man he created man with a plan B just in case you fall there is a part of me in you I can't let you go I will have to find a way to come and get you back to myself and this is very important so he kept them out of the garden and said remain here after four days I will come and get you back into the garden again but let me do a very quick work that has to do with your redemption because you are now fallen and of course they were outside the garden for four days between when man fell and the time of Abraham it was 2,000 years between Abraham and the coming of Jesus 2,000 years and we know that a day before God is like a thousand and a thousand like a day I'm sure when he told them that Adam would have said I have four days oh God well, who can not wait for four days you just go and come back unknown to him that four days we're supposed to be in finally Jesus came as the second Adam and his assignment was to restore that which we lost to bring back heaven on earth because the moment man fell there was no heaven on earth oh brothers and sisters in fact the Bible told us that iniquity started increasing until at some point God said my spirit can no longer is that your Bible so officially the Holy Spirit left the earth in Genesis 6 he left this is why Jesus will keep saying I will send the comforter I will send the Holy Spirit meaning he left you are still in church say amen, amen. so after four days Jesus came and redeemed man back to the garden now but watch this this time around is not a physical garden as it were it is a spiritual reality that's why the man of God said joy starts in the heart in this kingdom almost everything starts in the heart that reality must be established first in your heart so the garden now is a spiritual atmosphere is a spiritual reality that's why your language is different from those who are in the world you operate a different economy from those who are in the world and this is very important God bless you thank you so much please celebrate Adam <laughs> hallelujah now the second Adam came and started gathering disciples gathered a few of them and the disciples were now the one that asked him he said teach us to pray and captured in that prayer was his assignment he said so anytime you start praying pray and say our father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name then the next thing that is a priority is that heaven comes back to earth that's the word thy kingdom come it means the reality of heaven everything that is obtainable in heaven begin to find expression here on earth so let thy kingdom come and let thine will be done originally in the garden that's how it was it was the will of the father until man decided to exercise his own will thy kingdom come thine will be done on earth as it is in heaven so meaning the earth should synchronize with heaven so that when you look at the earth whatever is happening in heaven should exactly be what's happening on earth heaven on earth now the man of God shared with us one of the keys in his kingdom come on earth or oh, heaven come and he touched a little in fact when he started touching that one I said ah man of God has preached my message he talked about the will can I tell you one of the major ways to make heaven come on earth is to submit your will to his will submitting your will to his will bringing yourself under the influence of his will that's how Adam lived until he decided to exercise his own will the moment he exercised his own will he went out of the will of God so if we must have heaven come on earth the first requirement is that the will of man the believer must come under the influence of the will of God this is why he said when you pray our father 
which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. What's the next thing now? Thy will. Not my will. So long as your will is being done, heaven is not on earth yet. Because there are many things you want that God does not want. Is that true? Oh, yes. If we start probing your heart now, the things we will find that you want, believe me, 98% might not be the things God wants for you now. So the moment your will is in charge, heaven cannot come. The first requirement is to submit your will to his will. Hallelujah. Jesus said, I lay down my life and I pick it up. I lay it down, my will. I pick it up. He said, my meat, John 4, 34, my meat is to do the will of of him that had sent me and not to leave it halfway to finish it to finish it to do the will of him who has sent me and to finish it this is very important the will of the father and can I tell you this is the height of your Christian life coming to a point where what God wants is what you want let me want what you want oh my dear Lord Powerful song by Dr. Paul in NJ. What, what you love, love oh dear Lord, Lord, that is how you design life to be, Lord. Help me, Lord, to live as I ought to live. Oh Lord, take me to the place where I have no will that is separate from your will. Are you hearing what you are saying? Oh Lord, take me to the place where I have no choice that is separate from your choice to be lost in you is my desire to be all for you is all I want oh Lord take me to the place where I the man of God said these kind of songs are not written they are received most of them are pressure of your life you don't write these kind of songs and these songs are not even for children believe me do you know what it means to come to a point where your will is not separate from his will where your choices are not separate from his choices so even when you see a beautiful girl and say, Lord, this is the one I'm going for, he said, no. As it has to do with where I'm taking you and my plans for you, not for you. And there are times you can fight it and say, how about God? Lord, share you say you will grant our heart desire. Let me tell you, when you are a child, he can give you what you want. When you grow up, you receive what he has for you. It is a realm, it is a height. As a child of God, you can ask and receive, but that when you start growing up, no, you have to ask him, Father, what will you have me do? That kind of question, children don't ask it. This is the height of your Christian life. Coming to a point where what he wants is what you want. The psalmist said, Lo, I come 
in the volumes of the books they are written consigning me to do your will I come in the volumes of the books they are written about me to do your will oh God yeah, I come in the volumes of the books they are written about me to do your will, O oh God. See, even me talking now, let me submit to you. It is my prayer. It is still my prayer to come to that point where what he wants, what I want. Because do you know that even Jesus face to face with the assignment of the father he said father if it is my will let this cup pass then he said never and God will say based on my training for you wait for seven years and after waiting for seven years remember God can give you speed in one year but that waiting is not easy oh it can be there are times you can be waiting on the will of God and you are crying can I tell you the will of God is not sweet most times let no man deceive you when it has to do with the will of God there are times you might be crying obeying the will of God there are times father not my will but your will it's like a, a music minister here this, this guy sing amazingly now imagine you have been rehearsing and working and building and hoping that one day one day maybe god will bless you with one son that will bless the nation and then god tells you thank you god tells you son for you i know you are anointed i know you have done everything you need to do for me to lift you but as it has to do with being known and being famous and being whatever it is it's not within the blueprint of your assignment do you know the will of god and if you truly hear the voice of God with all your rehearsals, you might stop rehearsing. He says, so what's the need? No, what's the need? See, I can just be in church. Even if I sing off key, who will catch me? Meaning all the rehearsals you have been doing is aiming one height so that somehow, somehow, one day, now God comes and says, no, that's not the case. The will of God, Jesus was crying. He prayed one prayer point for three hours, brother first prayer point not no i don't want this cup if there is a way you can redeem man and bring heaven back without me dying let's do it prayed for one hour went back and saw his disciples not even helping with intercession maybe they would have helped in convincing god now they are not doing anything he went back again one prayer point for another. went back the third time same prayer point and god said i've made up my mind if you are my son go through it now you will know why god said behold my son in whom i'm well pleased in fact he now commanded creation to hear him hear him in other words he has paid the price for this dimension hear him many times when you even see god lifting people back it should not be a prayer point until you, until you know what you have gone through imagine that the testimony man of god you just shared I'm, i was a pastor i'm a pastor's son too and you know what it means father my father is a pastor do you know that kind of prayer father my father is a pastor we are doing everything we need to do and it looks like things are not working where are we going that's usual for me that was a source of the frustration sir you said god called you where are we going our school fees cannot be paid where are we going rent is a problem food to eat that was the source of my pain now you will not know that he went through pain never desire the glory until you know the story oh. never you might have to know what someone laid down for what god have now put in their hands before you start envying that result and this is not just even about ministry it might be about business have you met a businessman that was frustrated for 10 years before the breakthrough came it's easy to sit back and wish to have his result but if we take you through the pathways many might not come out not my will but your will 
for many of us tonight that might be the cry father i now choose to surrender to your will and many of us god have been talking to your will have been fighting his will what you want has been fighting what he wants all right it's time to move to so and so location he said god me i'm not going nowhere that can be it it's time to drop this for this no lord for many might even be responding to the call of god every time your will is in play then the will of the father is out of play one more time let me sing that song i come in the volumes of the books they are written about me to do of the books they are written about me to do your will oh god one more time i come in the volumes i come in the volume of the books they are written about me to do your will to do Let me show you one more scripture and then we pray. I know my time is up, but one more scripture. I'll make the altar call and then we close. John 21 and verse 18. There are many of us that gave God our lives and went and collected it back. Because it's not easy to follow. It's not easy. It's not easy. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Jesus is talking, and Jesus said he's the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus should not have been lying, but he still stressed it for you to know how serious this is. Truly, truly, I say unto you, when you were a child, thou guardest thyself, and walkest whithersoever thou wildest. Forget about the King James. It means you will bet yourself and go to wherever you want. He said, but when thou shalt be old, when you will become mature you will have to stretch forth your hands and someone will now lead you and take you to places you do not want to go submitting to the will of god that's what it is that as a child you can do what you want come to church late nobody can talk you miss the house as nobody can talk you can do whatever and undo whatever it is and nobody talks when they talk you can just shout and everybody will just go back to their shell the bible says, when you now become a man it is the lord himself that will tap you and say from today no more let coming he will now lead you to where you do not want that's maturity in the kingdom and when we get to that point now heaven can come because the will of the father is now being expressed through somebody do you even know our lost prayer give us verse 2 of that look let's wrap up with that look 11 verse 2 and he said when you pray say our father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come everybody read the remaining part thine will be done uh-huh as in heaven so we're he didn't say so on earth english student that english is supposed to be wrong so in earth but he said so in earth not so on earth you know what he was talking about that the will must be done in you what were you made of until you come to a point where you allow the will to be done in you as a human it cannot even be done on earth yet 
until you as an individual is available to allow the purposes the will of God find expression can we pray please be on your feet Oh Lord, take me to the place where I have no will that is separated from your will. Oh Lord, oh Lord, take me to the place where I have no choice that is separate. we're going to pray just one prayer and I'll make the altar call and we are done for tonight until Jesus came to redeem man heaven on earth was not possible and when he even redeemed man he said you have to pray and allow the will of God to be done in you in earth it has to be done in you first before we talk about it being done in your sphere of influence and generically on earth you're going to pray one prayer lord if you are looking for anybody to express your will through i know it might be painful but i'm available do you understand please wait hold it first you will play for us but then listen lord if you are look and can i tell you i told you earlier if god choose to use you to express his will it can be painful at times it's like the bible saying they that wait upon the lord how many of you know that waiting upon the lord is not easy Huh? waiting upon the Lord means all your mates are now graduate and you are still writing jam no believe what I'm telling you at times waiting upon the Lord means all your mates are married living in their houses you are still squatting with someone but look at what he said at the end he said they that wait upon the Lord eventually when it's time to move you don't walk with your legs you mount up with wings no, it will be against the justice system of God for you to wait for 10 years and he still allow you to walk with your legs. No. So he said, after waiting for 10 years, when it's time for you to move, I don't allow you to use your leg. You mount up. You see, this is why when God asks you to wait on me, listen, I've, I've said this countless times, it is set up for speed. Because he can give you in one day what others labored for 15 years to get so pray the prayer lord it might not be easy but through my life let heaven come on earth through my life let your will find expression it might not be easy but i submit my will to your will is someone praying is any believer here praying i submit my will to your will i submit to your will I submit to your purposes whatever you want to do on earth do through me oh let heaven come on earth through an individual through my life through my career through my ministry through my business let heaven come on earth come on this is where God intends to take us where your life become an expression of his life where your business become an expression of his will where your family your relationship become an expression of his will is someone praying come on i know that are believers here who understand the will of god Lord, let your will be done, not mine. Let your will be done, not mine. Let your will be done, not mine. 
Let your will be done, not mine. Shaka baraka palata barata. La barata baba. Come on, one more minute. Cry to the Lord. Cry to the Lord. Let your will be done. Let your will be done. Let your will be done. Shalantem preska belata. Araka palako sopara palada mai. Lembera kaparo koso sopela kata belada ma. Ambara koto parada balata. That whatever you want to do on earth, do it in and through my life. I am available. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Listen, God cannot bypass your will and do with you whatever he wants. It's not possible. Jesus himself is about to be born. They had to take permission from the woman that was donating her womb. Is that in your Bible? They had to seek consent. Woman, something is about to happen to you and you will conceive without meeting a man. We want permission. She asked the question, how can these things be? The moment the angel explained, look at what she said, be it. That was agreeing, be it unto me according to what you want. And immediately, she became pregnant. Revelation says, I stand at the door of your heart and I knock. The Holy Spirit is not a demon. Listen, it's only demons that can enter people without their, their, their permission. But the Holy Spirit is not like that. He cannot use you without agreeing. Your will will have to agree Lord whatever you're doing in the city don't do it without me don't do it without me and Lord whatever you're doing in the city I'll make the altar call and pray with us now. Tomorrow we'll also take our time to minister to the sea. Pray for a few people. Ensure you invite someone. But listen, you know you are under the sound of my voice and you are saying, Apostle, I used to love Jesus. My ways used to be right with him. They are no longer right. I backslided. Well, I'm no longer very serious with him. Or you're not even born again at all completely. I want to pray with you. This is a very beautiful and lovely we want to welcome you back home you are in that category now you've heard the word of God you are about to surrender intentionally to Jesus or to rededicate that life intentionally to him wherever you are, come you might be the only person but take that boat that come I want to pray with you come come God bless you my brother come take that boat step even if you are the only person and you don't have to wait for someone to come before you start coming come if the Lord is talking to you and is talking to your spirit, don't fight that voice. Come. Don't fight that voice. Take that step. Take that step. I perceive that if someone still taking that bold step, come. That you just know if rapture happened, you won't join us in that flight. Come. And if Jesus is convicting and talking to your spirit, it means you are not far from him. Come. Just respond to that voice willingly, intentionally. I have just one life to live and it must glorify you I us O oh Lord in time and for all eternity place your hand in your heart I wanted to pray this and mean it from your heart maybe you are following online and you want to make this decision join them here to pray say dear Jesus I believe you are the son of God I believe you died for me today I confess all my sins and I ask for mercy I return back to you and I receive by faith the gift of eternal life thank you for saving me I'm a child of God now and I'm born again in Jesus mighty name Amen. please wherever you are lift your hands I want to speak over us Father, I pray with this one's first. I ask that the name of the Lord be named upon you. Love Jesus and be established in grace. Forward ever and backward never. 
in Jesus name amen please can you just stand follow follow the man of God there and they are going to go with you and attend to you God bless you God bless you please wherever you are lift your hands let me just speak of our lives for tonight lift your hands close your eyes don't be distracted father I'm seeing a prophetic mantle coming on someone. The ability to see. The ability to see and understand the voice of God. Is a grace coming on someone. And I pray for everybody tonight in the name of Jesus. Let your love for God rise to a new level. Whatever has stood between you and the will of God for your life, let it fall down now. Amen. Like Dagon falling down before the ark, let it go down now. Amen. And I decree in the name of Jesus that from tonight, may Jesus, may the Holy Spirit conquer you. May he win over your will. And may he begin to do through your life the things that are designed for him to do. In the name of the Lord Jesus, be established in grace. Be established in grace. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen and amen. God bless you. I will see you tomorrow on the Lord.